I wanted to Three. get you, I wanted to get you saying that on, but I didn't. Doing you weren't quick enough to hear me doing your mum. <laughs> like you were too quick in in doing. Oh, your oh, oh, I I I, I hey. didn't last long enough doing your mum. Hey. You are you are a bitch. You are you are pussy. Welcome. Nice guys finished uh, uh, first. Do uh, this. The Q, the the special Q and A, which I think is episode as, of the Dev Q and A. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's lucky we had a special episode because we don't think we can make a normal episode, right? Uh, oh well, yeah, uh, that, that, might like be, normal... that, that might not be true. Might not be true now. It's true. Um, true. Yeah. So. Uh, we're lucky we had uh, this this in store, or else there wouldn't have been one this week, month. Then again, that probably means we're going to get two this month, or we're not going to get in any effort, or something's going on. We'll see. Um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we got we got this, and this is uh, particularly juicy since it comes from the mouths of uh, the highest voice and order of the devs, right? Like they, uh, I don't think I don't think there's people that outrank these two. Um, um uh, no, not really. Probably, I think Henrik might be on the same level. Henrik looks like yeah, founder slash CEO. CTO. Uh, uh, what so does that mean? Only one CEO. Soren is a CEO, which is um. So senior executive. So it's not senior. It's not with a C. It, it means executive officer. I don't know what. And Mick right. is a CCO. Henrik is a CTO. Um, so I don't know what any of that means. But we've got two sections. This is taken from the um the five years in orbit anniversary stream. There's a couple. There's a couple short windows in which they used to answer questions. Um, there were three in total. Um, two of them were with Mick and Soren. One of them was with another two blokes. We're not doing the second Mikko and Soren one because it's all about publishing side of things and it's like about the nature of the publishing as well. It's not particularly about the games so much. Except the one about um whether or not Deep Rock Survive was um or DLG Survivor was in canon to Deep Rock. Um and they were like, Well, it it is, but you know, it, it's there isn't really a canon um story. So it's that's makes it more difficult to place because it's like yeah everything that happens in deep rock is, is sort of like a, a hypothetical scenario you know you sort of just make up the story of what you're doing but there's still a canon in what exists in the universe and it, it does take place in the drg universe um although whether or not every individual thing that you do is canon is like a that's a different whirlwind um yeah, plus it, it feels like they implied, and this is just to get this out of the way because we won't be covering that Q&A, but uh, they implied that they probably will add more guns than what the game actually has to that Survivor game. Um, mm. Like It was like, we're going to add all, hopefully all the guns in the game and more. Um, so it, it, it's, it's going to lose canonness uh, yeah, it as it, as it goes. Say, uh, you know, don't... <laughs> Well, I mean, as you know, as as mentioned, there is a lot of. I mean, if, if Survivor does start making up some new guns for itself, there'll be a lot of like equipment in the zeitgeist of vague deep rock lore because there's grenades in the board game, isn't there? Um, yeah, that isn't in the base yeah, game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there, there are some like vague deep rock weaponry that you don't have access to in the main game. Um, which and there might be more with Survivor, but that's not what we're here to talk about. I don't think. Which one day we'll be there to talk about it because I do want to play Deep Rock Survivor. Uh, I, yeah. I'm interested in that quite a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, we're here for whatever they get asked for. Um, so I think we should get into it, right? Yeah, um, so um, I don't know. obviously this is a um, special episode because of um, where this is coming from, but also in how this is formatted. I'm going to play the video and we'll pause after each question has been answered. I'm also playing it at 1.225 times speed, which I tested, and it works uh, for me. Um, we'll see if Tyler is as uh, quick-witted. Um, 
Are they going to have like a higher pitch voice? I mean, it's kind of hard to make. Mickle's still deeper than most people. Um, yeah, and, yeah. So this is, uh, at, like, this is yeah. This is on the left is um, Soren, who is the CEO of Ghost Ship Games, and on the right is Mickle, who is the CTO and the game director. So that gives you an idea of the level of authority we're dealing with here. Um, yeah, bow down in the face of your masters, if you must. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I skipped the first question, which was about um, the Legacy Edition, and they just told people how you access it. That it, it, you get it if you've installed the anniversary update, and they've said that they haven't actually decided um, if it's yeah. going to be temporary or not. Um, this is still up for debate. It might actually stick around, or it might stick around longer. I think it's probably going to stick around longer. I don't know how much effort would be for them, but it, it, it's just their issue, wasn't it? With it was the the fact that it does make the it. game size bigger. Yeah, it makes um, the game slightly bigger. Um, yeah. also, if it sticks around for longer, there'd be more pressure to put it on console as well, I suppose. So yeah, it may it might not be a bad idea to just get rid of it once it's done, once the anniversary event's done, and just so people don't get. Paid yeah, I mean, I was thinking it maybe like, maybe just like package it out as like a. Uh, like a Steam thing that you can just get if you want. Well, yeah, I like, suppose it's a, um, it's a valid debate then. If it's a separate worth game. Doing. I think they should do that, to be honest. Yeah. Um, just as a free little thing. Maybe like a, they need to make it free. Maybe not free. I mean, that would be a bit far, I think, but maybe just like a fiver if that. Um, like Maybe you get it in Supporter just... Edition, if you buy the Supporter Edition. Maybe, something like that, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that that was the first question that I guess we skipped. Um, yeah, so the, next, now, the first one that we're going to get is actually like probably one of the better ones. So, juiciest play. They really got in there. Are there any new biomes in the pipeline? New biomes in the pipeline? Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's there's always a lot of new stuff in the pipeline, but we, I mean, I've seen concepts, but that's not the same as there are. Uh... No, like that part of the pipeline was a very early part of the pipeline. But, uh, but just, I mean, we're we, we, we not going to make that game where you're going to ask us about everything, and then we either <laughs> say yes or no, and then at the end you can actually guess what the <laughs> what season four is. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, there was a long no comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Asking about new biomes. Well, I mean, the way that Soren um, explains it, as in, there's, he's seen like concepts, and that's like a part of the pipeline. That's like the very early stage. That's obviously like true. That's obviously the case. Yeah. Um, and we have known there to be, you know, Corset Meyer is in that point of the pipeline. Lord knows if it's ever going to get further through, but we still know that there is a biome there. But they were squirming, man. Because this yeah. is something we don't really get to see in the normal dev Q&As, is that we don't even actually get to hear the way they say it and, and with going through those, like, kind of, you know, the well, you words. Could. But, um, you could, but, you know, yeah. you don't get to see that would faces. take a lot longer. Yeah, this but this is, we're hearing this is them, literally... we're them, and it's also these two. <laughs> yeah, this is literally, they were like, oh, um, um, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, 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 shit. Uh, like, we can't, we can't say no, because we'd be lying, but we can't say yes, because we don't want to confirm it. And so they had to try and wiggle their way through that landmine. And this is why we are almost convinced we're going to be getting a, uh, a, 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 a yeah, you know, a biome. At least, if not ne this season, next season. Well, he, like, see, the thing is, at, um, at, towards the end, he did say, you know, we're not going to play this game where we aren't like answer these kind of questions, and then you end up just guessing what's going to be in season four. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fact that you mentioned season four, I do find that very sus. Yeah. Um, Although they, they did lean closer to a no, technically, since well, they didn't say no. They did, it, the way you said it is like the, there's no biomes that are actually like further through the beginning of the pipeline, right? Like they, he kind of implied that that like all the but biomes I, they I have are like him, the, I stage think overall, one. Their answer implies that they um, it's something they're on at the moment. Yeah, you know? they're switched on to uh, biomes at the moment. Yeah, um, which as we've talked about a little bit on the podcast, out which one gets further through the pipeline? No? Yeah, it, it it would it makes a lot of sense. Biomes is something that uh, the game hasn't had in a while, and considering it is just as important as like more important than game modes, but that that tier of content, game modes, uh, no, not game modes, more important than warnings, but like warning game modes, that kind of content, we haven't had a biome in a while, and it wouldn't be surprising if we got one, and there. 
inability to say no plans as well because right they normally do that right they normally say no plans but they didn't um and if that's any if anything though it's because these guys aren't really trained to be secretive if you know what i mean like i feel like, like you're out of jacob trained? they know trained they to know be secretive <laughs> Johan and Jacob, they they go they go in the mines twice they're, a week, and they practiced. get asked very specific questions, and they know exactly how to avoid answering them um, the wrong way. But these two, they're 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 vulnerable. They only come out rear their heads once a year, and and they, they get land blasted with a question like that, and they are not prepared. Um, and that was what the answer we got. Um, so it, it's pretty funny and pretty. It's why this is a, a thing we always look forward to: uh, the yeah. dev Q and A's and the anniversary um... stream. We talked about it um, in the podcast yesterday. It's like when we get new enemies, there's like a, um, as an aspect of like an update. Um, every time it's been like a big enemy dump, it's been um, it's been tied to biome exclusive enemies as well. Um, it sort of yeah. just lines up previous trends. Not that they have to follow previous trends, um, but th those trends do exist. And it, you know, we know we're getting new enemies in season four as a focus, and that makes that pretty cleanly lines up with a new biome as well. And it's also the only yeah. bit of that content they haven't done yet for a season. You know, the fact yeah. that season three was it's a warning that again. that anomaly, it. right? Yeah, I, I would love to <laughs> see I that. we're going to get that first. I, I want to see an anomaly, to be honest. Sure, you know, but I, not I before a biome. I'm I, sorry, I would, but... I would like... have done if it was last season, you know, because yeah. only because we got two warnings in a row. It's just like, I want to see something. Biome probably feels more like, you know, it, season three almost felt like they were avoiding a biome. Um, it's, yeah, it's just like it how we, how like we, that how we make lot. that the main season content, and I can imagine that's difficult with the way that they've been doing it. But you know, everything you know about season four, despite how little it is, points us towards it being more focused on stuff that doesn't have to be sectioned off, and a biome probably never can be. And also, just the idea of new enemies just being added to the roster is also something you can't segregate because. We sort of think that might be the point of it as an update. So biome lines yeah. up with that as that like principle as well. Um, yeah, and we also agreed that they only really need like not one like for the rest of time, but they need an, a, a season soon that adds that type of content. And just new enemies and a biome is is pretty perfect candidates for that kind of thing. So, yeah, and also they're just their their answer just makes it feel more it, likely. In no it way just... screamed no. And leaned far more towards um, it's yes, but we can't say that. Um, I can. T I think we can pretty like. I think we can very safely say to uh, season four or five. We like we really can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't make sense. For, it makes, it makes it's already far less that. sense for it to not happen within one of the next two seasons. So yeah, I think we're going to see a biome this year probably. So, but yeah. I think we should move on. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, are GSG publishing accepting pitches? Where to send them? I think if you go into uh, GoShip, GoShip.dk slash publishing, there will be uh, a publishing there. And then if you go right at the bottom, there is an email and uh, you can send stuff. And we are looking at it. We have been uh, pretty busy preparing this. So uh, there's already already quite a bit of things in there. We, we are looking for some specific stuff. And that is already says that on the publishing page. And we'll go through that uh, uh, after uh, 3 o'clock when we start the uh, that segment. But I can say one thing is that uh, that does not say on the page is that we will uh, need to see playable prototypes and we will need to see a formed team, a team that, that exists. And, and that can that, execute the game. And that can execute the game. Uh, just, so, just like you're sending, sending us yeah. a game design, our pitch is yeah, not enough. it's not enough. No. So there'll need to be some, some meat on this and some reality in, in this for this to, uh, to happen. So can I just, uh, just jumping topic yeah, here? Yeah. Because we have had this oh, yeah. uh, amazing uh, uh, coil gun replay. Well, I don't see how uh, that's like related to the stopped. question. Can you turn up the volume a little bit? I actually can't. No? Is that actually max volume? What the hell? Oh. Yeah, it's fine for recording as far as I know. Um, but for you, you would just have to turn up the uh, volume on your end. <laughs> right. If that means you turn me down, that's turn fine. you up and you're already very loud. Well, you could turn me down if you need to. It doesn't affect the recording. But you're both coming out of the same thing? The no, probably not, actually. Either way, uh, I don't know. Um. Anyway, sorry. Well, that was just about the publishing thing, which I kind of wanted to avoid, possibly. But it's sort of talking about what if you're interested in pitching something, what you sort of need. They're very open to things. So, like, if we just if anyone just approaches us with a good idea, like for anything, we basically we wouldn't be able to say no. And that included like um, <laughs> uh, like 
Deep Rock Galactic like productions, like a film or a series. Yeah, if like the pitch is good enough, but um, but it's, it's not, not just it's not that, that literal. They said, that's, that's, they said that's... specifically when it comes to the ghost ship publishing thing, they said something about playable prototypes. It's like you need yeah. to have started making your game for them to start you helping to... you with it because that's yeah. not what they're. You need it's to... not development necessarily that they're helping with. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's it's um it's something that like because that's the thing is that it's not you walk up to them with a like a piece of paper with a pitch on right or email them that right um it is the fact that you have to basically already show that you could make this game on your own you just need a bit of help and that's what you need to demonstrate you need to demonstrate what the game is and it needs to be a game quite similar to stuff that they make and that the other publishing games are because we'll get all this talk out of the way um. In the like, yeah, like uh, he mentioned it probably later on. Um, I think in the other Q and A that like, if it's a story-driven single-player game, they're probably not gonna want it. Like that is not, uh, yeah, like like that's not really how they um, like they they want their games really. Like that's just not what they want to kind of publish out there. Um, so you have to kind of still be doing the same right kind of game that they want to actually add to, but also prove that yeah, you can do it. Um, they, like, their even without their to help. Guide, their intention is to guide games that um, are like in early access and like live service because if they want to go, they want to guide games that are would be on a similar path to them. And yeah, they the basically success, just want to bump out. Because the success that they've like, had with it, because the success yeah. that they've had with their scenario, they want to make sure people in the same position, um, like have the like have like the retroactive advice so they can basically help them do better than they did even as in they can take everything yeah. they learned and apply it to people who are in the same position except from earlier on because they have all the like the advice now so what the hell is this <laughs> they're moving the icons are moving you see that they are moving don't like that all right oh yeah, that's publishing um okay and the story about this was that uh, I think it's Zach Greer mm -hmm. had uh, have, had made this and he did a video of it. And then uh, Anas, one of the designers on Deep Rock, he uh, he wrote like, this. "I want it." <laughs> oh, I want one. <laughs> then he got one. And, it and is then cool, they actually, yeah, cool, so yeah. actually send it over. And I mean, it's kind of amazing, right? I mean, even works. Yeah, it even works. I want uh, that. Yeah. I can't shoot with it, I guess. No, <laughs> uh, I, I think maybe it can interfere with our microphones. I think it's just also really cool seeing like the <laughs> low poly in mean, real cool, life. And we were all like crazy. Like, like they, they didn't like <laughs> simplify it into like uh, what, they make it real. Yeah, big, big shout out to. But like, but they kept it like polygony. All right, pretty cool. Another question. When you promote, if you promote, will the reward or clocks and cosmetics always be for the class you promoted? No. It will be, and, and we are not going to do that. Uh, it is, it is going to be uh, uh, random, just like uh, with everything else. Basically, again, we're trying to make a system that will encourage you to play all four dwarves. And, and we, Deep Rock Galactic is a bit special in, in that regard uh, compared to other, other games. So, yeah, I mean, um, the, the, I, I don't know if Axis Cronus used these words, but there was this idea of them possibly, when they added the uh, Matrix Core promotion rewards, it, there's an element of them having bent the knee, to the community um in, in a sense they definitely did but they didn't sort of leave behind certain they they, they they always hold on to at least one of their principles in pretty much every change that they make in response to the community you know yeah people got one of the things that they wanted in fact people got exactly what they wanted it arguably better in that they um it was the rewards that people were getting through the exploit except you get it on promotion instead of having to do the assignment again um but they're yeah. still holding on to that idea of the uh, the RNG aspect of it. Um, they they, yeah. refu they refuse total control because they do genuinely believe in that system and that it's meant to encourage you to play yeah. um, all four classes. Which, if anything, because like, people will complain about how when they're playing, like, like they play engineer constantly. Like it's often engineer mains for some reason. The like was like I play engineer all the time, but I don't get like any of his cores. So it's just getting really annoying. Like that system could arguably be in place, right? Because that is exactly what they're doing. They don't want to feed your main. They want to feed everyone, and then when you kind of feel starved in your main, you'd go play someone else. Um, or like that kind of system is in place. Like, yeah, they don't actually. They really don't encourage maining in this game. Um, it, no. with overclocks at least um, no they don't want to like in any uh, i don't think they do that in any way really at all they don't yeah. encourage maining 
I, I don't see any way that they could. Um, yeah, obviously it occurs. They I think they, 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 do, they do know people will have their favourites. Um, but like, as far as gameplay is concerned, yeah. Um, like, it is, it's in- interesting. Um, and that, yeah, they stayed steadfast even during that. Because even I was like, you know, if they, if they do give you like a single like core type, like, you know, matrix core of like a uh, natural thing, like an overclock, I was thinking they'd give it to you in whatever class you promoted to like encourage playing that character more or like reward them that character more. But, um, they don't want to do that. <laughs> and I think that's yeah. something I missed. So fair enough. Um, yeah, I suppose, but, um, yeah. People probably still sort of mistake certain things about sort of um how they 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 might not understand how much this is going to increase like the rate of overhook acquisition because you know how it used to be it was like one point something forge mastery rewards every week because you used to have like the nine cores in total and therefore that was nine things that you could forge so it was like one point like eight um, forge mastery rewards per week basically. Um, but now that you've pushed it over, you got you get up to twelve forgeable things per week now, or, or no, actually plenty more because I guess it's not a promotions aren't a weekly thing. You know, you're gonna people are gonna be getting forge mastery rewards way more often now as well, and they're sort of, I guess there's, I wouldn't call it an attempt on their part, but it, in a way it's gonna almost dissolve the um the lack of control that people feel, sheerly by giving them so much more. <laughs> even though it's still random. Um, which is why I do question the amount that they've chosen to give still. Um, but yeah. they kind of just want people to shut up about it. Well, maybe that includes us. <laughs> I think, yeah, but I think, I think it does come down to the, um, the thing we know is that they don't need the core hunt to be as long as you anymore. There are plenty of systems and plenty of reasons to come back and play the game. Um, the, the core hunt is not the only reason. The weekly stuff is not the only reason, so they yeah. don't need to stay stay by that and keep it as slow as it is. Um, Honestly, even just so, making yeah. promotions themselves more satisfying, you know, even someone who's got all the overclocks, that could even still do something in terms of. Um, but not Have you actually got on that? I think that's out now, right? I don't know if it is though. I I haven't actually been able to see. I saw someone on Reddit that uh, got one. And it was like it looked different from the screenshot they showed in the thing. Like it had different stuff on it. So uh, I think it, it is out now. Um, I know it's out on PC. I've just seen people saying that they haven't experienced it and they've been and they're on console. So I promoted and I right. didn't see anything. So <laughs> I don't I, I don't know. Um, right. Well, we, are, we are just waiting for a question here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we... uh, let's see, there's a lot. It's, it's going very fast. Um, we have one here. Oh my God, the chat is completely out of control. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go keep firing. Uh, That's fine. Uh, will the season pass be like the same old season pass format like other games, or, would there, or will there be an interesting addition in each and every update? Uh, please repeat that question. I'm not sure you understood it. Um, uh, let me see. Oh no, it's going away. Wait, wait. Will the season pass be like the same old season pass format, or like other games, or will there be uh, interesting additions in each and every update? No, it, it'll be. We, we'll continue to do as we do. I mean, we, yeah. we're not. We're not. Uh, now, now we have found our formula. You can say so. So the the performance bars that comes in in uh, season four will uh, have equal amounts of content and work exactly like the performance pass. So one, two, and three. So I mean, if that answers the so, question. Uh, no, let me elaborate yeah. a little bit more. So we have the season pass, and we have the season events and the season challenges. The season events is something that we need to create for every season. Yeah. And in the season events are going to earn your script, and then you can take the script and spend them on, in the cosmetics. So you're also getting script from the uh, whole progression in the season pass. Um, so, uh, so yes, there will always be a theme. There will always be a season pass. There will always be events as a bare minimum. And then, of course, we're also throwing in other stuff. I do find it to be a bit of a, it's a, bit of a weird question, I think. Um, and the only reason I sort of care for question. their answer is because I just think their answer is just a good um, exercise in them showing that they, they know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's, you know, <laughs> they understand the decisions that they've made in regards to the performance pass and that they stand by them and they've just shown absolutely no sign of that faltering. They still believe in the system, the cosmetic tree, um, and that they're still just going to do it as they've been doing. I, I still don't quite understand what the, the guy was asking. It's like, but uh, I don't know. I think I don't that, that person just, 
I, I they didn't realize the game already had a, a season pass in it. Yeah, I, that's what I think that like. I honestly like they, they they thought they were just adding a new one, and it's like, oh no, what's it going to be like? Was it going to be like the other ones? And it, yeah, it, it's it was a very weird and annoying question to hear at the time. Uh, but yeah, they aren't they answered it pretty well, considering yeah, I, it made I no think fucking sense. Um, I just I guess it's just good to just have that um, played. Right, because I don't need to say much about it. Like, it really just acts as them just showing that they, no. they're on it. They got it. So that's what I have on that. Uh, what is your favorite scrapped content that didn't make it into the game? We, we, I, I once had a talk where I was asked to uh, showcase what what we had cut uh, from Deep Rock Galactic, and I, I couldn't really find anything. And the only thing I found was actually the um, uh, one of the flying... Uh, monsters that, that were not dangerous and I think we have was out for a while and then got in again yeah. and, and so we, we we have internally been telling ourselves that we have not caught anything but that's not true there it's is not completely true but i think the whole way that stuff. this is this is how i mean basically we are not planning so much ahead right now again we are planning for season four right uh, or i mean after season three we're planning for season four uh, and planning the content that will go in there uh, which and we don't have any idea about what is going into a season five right that's no, no. something that will happen afterwards um, and that means that we are always working on stuff that is on the way into the game. And that means, again, that we don't, we're not cutting very much work. No. We have some things uh, that are like put on hold, maybe, and, and uh, need the right season to fit into, yeah. I think. It's maybe but the, uh, but yeah. it is really yeah. not that much that we are cutting. I don't know what they're talking about there, but if, uh, by which I mean I know exactly what they're talking about, I think, um, which is the overclocks. Which is actually, that's a good thing, by the way, right? Because we've always said, like, oh, we know we're going to get new overclocks at some point. But honestly, I was never 100 percent sure. But I'm saying that since they started like the seasonal model, they don't, they just don't cut things anymore. They only make stuff that's going to get in. That sort of reassures me about that. And they're just waiting for like the right, the stuff that's been put on hold, which is exactly what happened with the overclocks. And they're just waiting for the right. Season. Yeah. Um, it is good to hear that, just so we know. Um, but yeah, I mean, cut content. I mean, there's sort of this... I don't even know if it's really a theory, but there's something about how the, the, the Rock Pox blisters look exactly like these old designs of of the uh, the charge suckers on Betsy. Um, mm. And they do... They, they reuse stuff, and in that case, they might even be reusing cut stuff. And there is cut content, but it's actually good to hear that they don't really do that anymore, because if you go back to Update 33, which you could almost call like a progenitor season... That was like a big one that came with the new biomes and dreadnoughts and the Macteras. There was a um, the uh, the, the Mactera magma bomber was like this enemy that was seen. It was in the it even made it into the trailer. So uh, that's a bit of a slip up there. It made it into the trailer of that update, and it's pretty sad to see that it wasn't added. But you know you've got to question why it wasn't. But it's good to know now that that kind of thing doesn't really happen anymore. Um, and I guess that means that not to mention the cost of Maya. Oh, no. of course, it Maya too. I guess that update had a fair bit of cut content. I wonder if those guys can. I wonder if those guys can come back. You know, we're getting new enemies. <laughs> uh, maybe the Mactera Magma Bomber can come yeah. back. Although, which I guess might have been a Magma Core exclusive. Although I think I remember in the trailer it wasn't in the Magma Core. Um, either way, that's just that's just. Um, there's not much to say there. It's just good stuff. I think knowing that their their development yeah. process doesn't leave a lot of got really any cut content anymore. And even if there's stuff they don't use, it's like. We made it so that it could be added, so it's going to get in at some point. Um, that's just yeah. good principles, I think. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if you have anything else to say. No. No. Uh, will you add a feature like removing beer with Q or similar? <laughs> that's for you, Michael. Removing beer with Q. Yeah, we, we oh, that's the that. whole thing. That that was, the, that's thing another part we fixed. We fixed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, that 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 we I don't know maybe that could be a solution. I I I need to talk with some of the designers on this thing. Make sure we do it deliberately and not, yeah. not by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> he almost sounded annoyed, <laughs> and he probably was. Um, I, don't, I don't think he was annoyed. I think he just doesn't care. Um, and I think that's 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 really fucking why. Why did why do people give a shit? I don't understand it. It's pretty clear it doesn't matter because um. It's like, you know, the, the, the promotion um, bug fix, you know, a lot of people who didn't know about it were sort of on the side for it, like, coming back in some way, right? No one who didn't know about that, the, the drink thing, gave a shit 
um, including us. I didn't know about it, yeah. and I also don't care um, because it, it's one of those things where you there's no like you can't see how it could benefit anyone, right? You could it, 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 logic dictates the um, that the promotion bug fix. Well, there's more to it at least, but this this drinks thing. It's like I just I guess no no one cares. I'm not, I, 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 yeah. I I don't know if anyone's watching this from oh shit, but you know. Um, I don't think enough people do care for this to be worth even talking about, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, Which obviously they didn't, right? They didn't. They just, just now did they realise, oh, somebody cares. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What a load of nonsense. Oh. Stupid dear. argument. Dairy Queen don't got McFlurry's stupid ass. Hold on. Video settings. All right, cool. Have you ever considered comics like lore and short stories? No, comics uh, is also something that's dear to our hearts, right? And, yeah. and we would would love to see some 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 things with with Deep Rock, but all, but there is some inherent thing in the way Deep Rock is told, which is like there's no real story in Deep Rock. It's more like a I don't know a recurring almost sitcom kind of uh, but I think, thing. I, I so, think I think if we saw like a cool concept for it, I, yeah, I, I think it would be super easy for us. We are not gonna be uh, not right now at least. We're not gonna be pushing a comic ourselves. But uh, obviously, if, if there was a really, really amazing idea. We've then... seen, of course, uh, many, many uh, fantastic uh, fan arts uh, from, uh, from, from, from you and, uh, and, and keep them coming. Uh, and, and so it's not hard to see Deep Rock being like uh, envisioned in, in, a, in a comic. No, I think actually, I mean, that, I think that, is, that is one of the crazy things with, uh, with you, the community and the things that you are doing, because we were setting up these characters and they are pretty bare bones in the sense that they are driller and engineer, gunner and uh, a scout. Uh, but the way you play it, the way we have introduced the voice lines and so on, have just turned them into characters, yeah. right? And I mean, it's not something that we, for example, if you take the driller, right? I mean, the fact that, that the driller can throw a C4 and hurt the team, right? That suddenly turns into, be he reflected in his personality, yeah. right? Uh, and I think stuff like that is... Uh, and of course, we play on this, then we, when we write patch notes, we write the, the war crime thing in... Yeah, yeah and then, and then it just becomes and, a synergy and where... And off on you, uh, and, and then we feed back in, and then it's... yeah. Gross, which we feel is amazing. Yeah, just the idea of um, an official like narrative. Anyway, I think people need to understand it's never going to be in the game. Um, first no. of all, because that's not their focus, and also it probably wouldn't be canon either. As in, they're open to like really good pitches, but it's like if they ever got, I, I guess, what's a good example? There was like I think there was like that um, like, adult or like dark like Pokemon anime. That got made by actually, you know, pretty much every version of like the Pokemon story is actually separate from each other. None of them are canon to each other. Like the games and the anime are completely separate, like canons. So you have stuff like that where it can work. But I, I suppose there'd be this awkward situation where if Deep Rock got some kind of official story oh. in another like medium, it would be treated as like the canon story, even though I don't think it would be. And you know, I, I I, it, it would need to be the, the perspective and it needs to be like start out with saying that this is just a tale of like four random dwarves like it's yeah, just, which is kind of the just, stories that get told by you playing it should, a, it should it should be like that you know it's not this isn't like carl's story or whatever that's what everyone wants to say yeah, like, like in the game you are experiencing that would break the something else the game that would break sort of the mysteries yeah. of the game and sort of the because the, the whole point of the game is to from a narrative perspective, the way because that's not their focus. So the way that they do it, they've sort of or they've had it evolve in a way where it just provide. It's just like head cannon fodder or just head cannon fuel, um, more than anything else. Yeah. Um. So they need to be very careful. I'd love to, but I would still love to see something official. Um. Yeah. But... The only issue is with the comic thing is it's really it's uh, the only meaty stuff worth comicking about is that stuff that you couldn't. Right, it would be the it, it would talk about like Carl and the, the source of rivals, and it would like delve into the mysteries in a more law story manner. Um, like there, there isn't a really a, a good way of of writing a story without touching those parts of the game, um, and so it'd be very difficult to try and make a canon story um, with what the game uh, would allow you to within its canon. Um, without like stepping over into headcanon stuff um, yeah and it's it's, done and it's good, just yeah. the, the game's done a good job at just having people come up with their own stories and there's like all this fan art and stuff that they and these ideas that they embrace and the, the dwarves are sort of come, becoming characters over time based on 
there. Yeah, actually, which as they talked about, works, yeah. You know, there's sort of this almost like a unified, like a, a mutual like agreement on like the personality types of the dwarves. Well, that's just developed over time yeah. in the community, and the stuff like that sort of just works in their favor, where they can sort of still just focus on what they want to focus on, and the community will sort of take care of that stuff on. Although they said that in in this sort of vein, the game itself plays like um, they imagine like a sitcom sort of, um, where it's all like yeah. the same thing, and it doesn't really matter. Like every episode doesn't really mean anything like to the next one, and that's actually I honestly an actual animated sitcom. Would be one of the best like productions, like pieces of um, non-game media <laughs> to get from Deep Rock, you know, some kind of like Netflix or like Prime, like ne- um, Deep Rock anime sitcom. But it'd be like a sitcom, uh, and you know, you don't really get that very often. I don't think um, all anime is sort of like, se- like actual series. Well, animated, si- you know, like an animated sitcom, but it's also ha- action focused. But it might not be. It could just be a bunch of dwarves just bumming around the space rig. You know, and uh, you know, I, I I don't know what mm. um did this, what thing did this, but I like the idea of something where it's like a, it, it's not a series, but there's this IP that has like a, like a a cartoon attached to it, but they only do an episode every time something happens in regards to the game, and it would just be sort of just like a small exploration of like this um group of like dwarves every time something hap- every time it's like a new season or a holiday event, and it's just like an episode. And it of the series, but there's a lot. There's a lot that a um. I, honestly, there's probably more that they can't do than it, that they could do, um, without sort of damaging people's perception. Because I just think they need to avoid like making a story that people would claim as the official Deep Rock story, um, because that and you know that would never be in game either. That's the thing. So it's probably that's why probably, I was mentioned. It would have to, to be navigate, like you know. It would have to literally almost be like the first like. Uh, like your first whole page, like the front cover, like or the title, is literally that this is a story of only four dwarves, and it's the, just just a random snippet of the entire company. Like it, that would have to be so fucking adamantly posted at like the front of it constantly to fight that off, like fight that impulse. Um, yeah, you know, but there's a chance people might not want a canon story unless it's in game. But even then, it would probably be quite hard to. Um, embrace, I reckon, on the community's part. It might not be as people might not just immediately latch onto it and be like, "This is the canon." This is the canon. It might not be um, that damaging, but it just depends on what comes their way and what they consider worth doing because it's just how they operate and what resources they would have to yeah. devote to that. Probably not very many. Um, but either way, I'd love to see something um, like come out of the DLG that isn't a game. Still, um, you know, who knows when that would ever happen. Or a board game, uh, or another game. So game well, generally. Uh, well, I, I want to see something that isn't a game as well. Uh, at some point. Yeah. Um... We can what? take another. Let's take. Yeah. Let's take a couple of questions more, and then, uh, then, then maybe let's call it. What drove the decision to not monetize the season pass? What? Oh, uh, so, okay. Yeah. So that, that was, uh, of course, uh, something we discussed how to uh, how to do this because everybody else. Uh, we're monetizing, um, and and we we ended up looking at it from a, a perspective of, of course, what will we present to the player, and we still wanted to link the. Uh, we're kind of monetizing it still because we're linking the DLC. Inside. But I think, but so, I think the reason why we introduced the season pass. I mean, I just went yeah. all through this before, right? Yeah. But the reason was not to make money. The no, reason no. was to actually solve how we were releasing our updates. Yeah. And I think that was that was our main purpose by doing it, right? To frame it to generate content that was for everyone when we came out with an update so yeah yeah, yeah. So, so i don't know and, and, and when we looked at our version of it it ended up like feeling right yeah so uh, yeah oh. i hope that answers it but uh i was paused in the wrong place i was paused on maybe instead of the extra video but yeah that's just another um <laughs> Example of them showing that they know what they're talking about, but um, the fact that they don't even—I don't think they even ever considered making it monetized—is actually pretty interesting. Yeah, they just thought well, it was a way to generate objective. universal content, you know, and that sort of yeah. explains something I brought up. I think I brought it up yesterday about um, the idea of just giving their updates like a, a, a minimum, um, something that can be expected every time, and that they didn't really view it as them changing updates on like a massive scale even though it changes like the labeling and it's given them a lot of them um, it has changed the direction of updates certainly um but i think they sort of just viewed it as like um 
giving their up like not completely changing the game but just giving their updates a constant um a consistent thing a, a required thing that people can expect every time and it's also content for everyone and um that just it, it just makes perfect sense and they it, i guess it never didn't it never not made sense you know it, they're happy with what they came up with i don't think they even really cared about what other like season uh, battle passes were doing you know it's just very pleasant to see yeah, it here, yeah. I think. <laughs> it's because um, for the other games, I mean, you could definitely say the fact that like for free-to-play games, their battle passes are there to make money. That is yeah. their objective with the battle pass. Um, that is literally... And to get people to stay on the game, which is obviously what is also on Deep Rock. But yeah, make money, keep, keep people playing the game. Those are the objectives. Where, as far as Deep Rock is concerned, it was to give content to all player levels and get people to continue playing the game. Because yeah, the there would be of, um, immense drop-off as soon as exactly. the, uh, the updated release. It, it, um, it's actually completely antithetical to their principles to make it paid because the, the entire idea was to make... Um, universal content. It wouldn't have helped them in any way, shape, or form. It would have damaged that, it, it like, would... massively. They would never put a paywall yeah. behind progression. They do say they sort of they partially monetize it by having the DLC, and that's their main monetization of the game. But it's not tied to it's not tied to gameplay or progression in any way, and that's also how they make money. And well, as in they make money by buying your loyalty, by not interfering with your experience. Um, beyond the initial buying the game, there's no other paywalls for yeah. um, content. Because I really like, no, I really like yeah using it. Like it is not that they don't care about money. It's just that they personally see um, owning the like yeah like earning your loyalty in a way of giving you as much content and um, like you know as as reasonably possible. Um, while you know and, and it, it will earn money in the long run. That is the way they see it. That is their monetization system. Instead of other games where they, they reach you for everything you have and leave you feeling terrible when you stop playing the game, they let you play the game as much as you possibly can, encourage you, love you, give you as much free shit as possible, right? And then it's like you fall in love with them and then you're more than willing to spend way more money than you ever would, right? Like, we have spent, at this point, approaching £100 of a game, Right? Like with all the DLCs, probably past that, if I had to guess. Um, like, because we never really bought the DLCs on sale, we bought them as they came out, and the recent one just came out as fucking 12 quid. We bought that immediately, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I, at no point in time, would be willing to spend anywhere close to that amount of money on like any other game, really. Um, like reasonably and not regret it. That's the thing because I've done that before. I bought 50 pounds fucking Apex coins at one point, and I regretted that. Hard. <laughs> I think one of the reasons oh, yeah, you would. Oh, I think one of the reasons it's very diff it's very easy to feel um, assured in your purchases of DLC because you never felt like it's done in a way right. You you sort of get built up to this um want to buy the DLC in a way where you never felt like you had to. You did it because you like wanted to. You know you never felt like you were missing yeah. out by not having the DLC, and that's what makes it so feel. That, that's what makes it feel good to spend your money on because it's something that you actually want as opposed to something that you it need is to make the game so... playable for you in any way. It doesn't interfere yeah, with the it, game experience it... in any way, and that makes it more desirable as like a thing to, um, I guess like a. It, you know, I, what's the right? I guess it's I don't, not not privilege and right, where it's just like um, it's not a necessity, which makes it feel like um, you're not. You know, you're not being forced to spend your money. I guess, in any way, it, it really does feel like um, you just give them money so they can continue making the game that you love, and then they give you a reward um for that and a little like thank you being the DLC. That is yeah. really what it feels like. Um, I, I view it as donations. Because... Well, actually, it's not. It's not meant. It's not like meant to be donations. The supporter packs are are actually in a way. Where it's just like this is this is the reason these are priced this way is because. This pack represents you. It is actually meant to represent you directly giving us money. Um, but yeah. you know, that's only two of the DLC so far. Um, it's probably going to stay that way. It, it's just, it, it's a really fantastic. Um, I don't even like using the word scheme. I think scheme is technically correct, but it that is. has sort of like, that has negative connotations, like the word. 
Um, yeah. But it, it's their, their well, monetization, monetization scheme system. is fantastic. And it's one of the things I want to do. Um, we haven't done a podcast on monetization yet. Sort of like one of the basic theme, like topics I've been holding on to. Um, yeah. And, you know, I guess like the release of a DLC would have been a good time to do that. I'm not sure when we'll do that. But still, I because it's one of the things that I can speak pretty much exclusively positively on about the game. Just the way they've handled monetization and the way they've handled things that would normally be monetized in other games. And it all just factors into their principles about how they handle the game and how they make it um, this sort of paragon of, like, uh, I guess, integrity in the industry. Um, and, and it just works in that sense. And I, I, you know, it's one of the things, it's one of the main reasons I won't lose respect for them, I don't think, you know? Yeah. 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 Right, cool. Yeah. Uh, how long will DRG be supported? Oh, that's a good question. And it's a good question. Uh, you're pushing the table yeah. because you're... Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good question. And it's a good question because when, when we started our adventure with Deep Galaxy five years ago, we were thinking that, well, maybe we are going to be supporting this game for two years. But now CERN has gone through all those curves where we have just been increasing our user, daily user base and, and users. And it has just been like, I mean, we can't stop now. We, and we won't stop no. because we enjoy working on it. So uh, it, it is definitely not in our plans in any way to stop working on Deep Rock Galactic. No. It, that is a journey that will just keep continuing. I, I, I think there's a really good chance that we've created what you could call an evergreen. That if we keep uh, supporting this and you keep playing this, then why should it, why should it die anytime soon? Why shouldn't there be even more Deep Rock Galactic in five years from now? And, and we'll do our best to do our part. <laughs> so, uh, so now you do your part. <laughs> <laughs> keep playing. Keep playing. <laughs> So, yeah. I think that's how I've always seen it, actually. That sort of the evergreen idea. Yeah. Where it's like, um, as long as it doesn't slow down, it's not going to slow down. As in, both sides sort of hold the hold the other side up, I suppose. You know? Yeah. And that means there's no reason as for it to stop. We, as long as we keep making it uh, worth, like, um, if we, as long as we keep making it worth uh, working on, They'll they keep, keep making it worth, keep worth playing. playing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just it's uh, a pretty, it's like it's um it's almost like a perfect system really to keep the game going. Yeah, like for it's almost like you know we do question certain it's things. It's a like win-win. Win. Um, sometimes we question like the rate of content and whatever, but like this, when you think about it on principle, it's really is a perfect life like live service system where it's um it's not it, it's just not. I, I I can't put it down to these specifics, but what it does differently to other live service games is clearly working in its favour, um, and I can see why they actually have confidence in sort of um, the publishing side of things, helping it, like uh, games in the same scenario because they've developed a system. I'd argue probably more accidentally than anything. They probably didn't see this um, coming, but it, it sort of, it's it sprung up. Um, I don't think deliberately, but I think it did spring up sincerely, as in it, this sort of system that we've got of like. Um, just being in equilibrium is born out of their good principles on of working in the game, and it's it really is just working in their favour. Whereas like um, as long as we keep it up, they'll keep it up as well, and that's just perfect. That means it that means the chances of it dying are just extraordinarily slim, um, because there's like yeah. a, there's like a generation of loyalty on both sides, or like there's loyalty that's been yeah. generated on both sides. Like they're like loyal there to the is... player base and we're loyal to them. <laughs> and like I feel like it, and it's not even just like at any point in time if like either side slips up, so that's it. Game over, everyone, that's it, ditch it, it's dying. Like if there's not enough players for like a single season, they're not gonna suddenly pull support, leave. If they fuck up a season and it's not worth playing, we won't all stop playing, right? We've got like a good three seasons of either way before we're like, okay, that's it. Right, it will take like three seasons of either them fucking up or us not playing enough before it comes to a close, and it doesn't seem like that's going to occur anytime soon. Um, no. So I think we're we're definitely quite safe. Um, this game is something very much worth just investing in, um, and that's actually, in the literally point, with the DLCs. It? That's, a, that's um, like but probably like, a lot of live service games nowadays, isn't it? And it's probably where people are sort of might even be warded off unless they sort of. You need someone to sort of tell you, I guess. Maybe that's what the kind of game Deep Rock is. But um, it's one yeah. of the few games I think that is worth investing in because it's been a live service game since it launched in early access. It's been this yeah. type of game for five years. And every decision they've made has sprung up in response to 
you know, not necessarily our direct responses, but it's it's everything every decision they've made has been based on either community response or what they what they've seen from the community in terms of like um just how the player base the game has been built around the players, right? Yeah. And that's and yeah, and the players they play games that are built around them, right? Yeah. And as long as that continues to be the case. It's it. That's it. Deep Rock will be going for like another five years. Easy. The, the decision making um, is is more player friendly than anything else. It's so much more player focused than uh, commercially focused. That as long as they keep that up, it's always going to be worth investing in at any point. It was worth invest. It was worth like sort of investing our time and our hearts into when it started. It would have been worth doing that on launch in twenty twenty, and it's still worth doing that now because it just is and that's the sort of the perfect sort of um scenario that they yeah. crafted this sort of, yeah, I mean, the, that, the idea it, of an evergreen is like a really like that explains it quite yeah. well yeah and it, and it, and honestly though i mean if it was if it, we didn't feel that this game was worth investing we wouldn't have a youtube channel on it right yeah it is a game that is at least like updated or like interacted with regularly enough by the devs that we both care passionately enough about to talk about and that we don't feel like it's ever going to go will away. Be abandoned. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I don't it, feel like it's it's worth investing in in a lot of ways. It's been worth investing in for our channel because we know it's something that's going to be um, that we are going to be able to talk about pretty much for as long as it, it well forever, I suppose, <laughs> or for yeah. as long as it can. Yeah. You know, for as long as we're going to need to. Um, I, I, you know, it's like it, it's a really weird idea. It's just like when the prop will die, but I don't think it will ever die. But there will come a point when they have to stop. And it's just but it's very yeah. difficult to conceptualize what that would be. It would almost have but to be also, down to like hardware limitations, you know? It's just like it's just too yeah, complicated it has to work. A on terraria. Like, as in hardware has the, has evolved too much. But you know, like Terraria is is actually a very similar scenario, I guess, because they thought that that's what that's what was gonna happen, didn't they? They thought that the hardware was gonna yeah. stop them, but they haven't stopped. They thought they were planning on yeah. stopping, but they didn't. And it, it feels like a similar thing could happen here. But and you know, and I guess I think you have you to turn to you... Terraria. When they're going to stop working on Terraria? Well, they don't have to stop. They don't have to stop now because other companies are invested in Terraria with the crossovers. Yeah, you know, they they and, and even bear in mind like, like, Evergreen going on this. <laughs> yeah, Terraria has been reliably updating and basically doing what Deep Rock has been going for like what nine years? More than that, like um, eleven? Yeah, nine? I think I think about maybe um, tw- maybe hold on, tw- uh, maybe twelve. It's probably been a very long time, and my point yeah, is that so, they have... yeah, so it's been twenty eleven, yeah, yeah, and so we're look. You think about that, right? And they're only now starting to hit, or not now, like last year. So we say eleven, only uh, eleven years are they starting to hit technical difficulties um, with their stuff, and then that implies that if technical difficulties is an issue, and let's say it takes about eleven years for that to kick in, we've still got another six, right? Which like, if it comes down to technical issues, which I imagine, considering how old that game is, Terraria is, they're probably technical issues is more worse because it is a lot more dated. Um, meanwhile, Deep Rock yeah. is pretty modern. I imagine it's, it's, it's based pretty, on it's, um, it's, you know it's also got Unreal Engine mm. on its side, which doesn't seem to be going anywhere. You know, Unreal Engine is going to yeah. be supported forever. It's like one of the most popular gaming engines. Yeah, and not to mention they. They they smoothly transferred over from you know Xbox One to Xbox Series X, right? Like uh, and like the the uh, they've already done a a console generation. Uh, it's actually jump. only, it's only benefited from that as well. Yeah. It's benefited from that. Yeah, obviously, well. yeah. yeah. But it, it is really that you know they um it it doesn't I don't know it it doesn't seem likely that there would be any reason to stop working on the game, um, other than like. It, uh, and I don't want to say it if like their office gets like nuked or some shit, right? Well, like yeah. that's the kind of I, the I, thing I it would take. It's, like, that that's point. A, it's a very that's a very weird thing to bring up, but it would stop the game <laughs> you know, if they got blown up. Um, yeah, <laughs> but you know, I, I suppose what this comes down to, it's caught. Cool, it, you know, we we know. Um, also, I just I to stop. Add more. that's my um, Bluetooth earphones. I accidentally like rushed them, so it played the video um but you know we, we never got this sensation that it, this feeling that it was going anywhere um but it, it, it's it's good on top of that to hear it was always a fear share that feeling and to explain yeah. where those feelings are coming from you know they explain it in a very logical way but also in a way that 
they share the feeling and they also understand it on a, like a logical level as well. So yeah, it's just good. And, and, and it comes as well down to the fact that yeah, they're like this is. Like, I assume the evergreen. I, I'm not sure of the exact term, but I assume like that could easily be used for like a monetizable. Like I don't know, but basically it's like you know there is no reason not to because as far literally like if it was just that Deepbrook made the money and they were just gonna have to keep working on the game, then that would be what it is, and that that would be more understandable if they stopped. But clearly they fucking love it, right? Like they enjoy yeah. the shit out of Deep Rock. Um, yeah. So uh, it is literally it's just. There is no rational reason why it should stop. It will just make everyone sadder, right? <laughs> like them, the the players. I don't know their parents. Like <laughs> like everyone would be like worse off if Deep Rock ends. Um. So yeah, it's not happening anytime soon, and it's not worth thinking about. Um. Which is really cool to get confirmation yeah. of. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Keep playing. Keep playing. <laughs> so yeah. Are there any plans to add more beer to the game? More beer? Yeah. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> Are there any? Uh, that's something we didn't actually talk I about. I forgot yesterday. about that. Yeah, so did I. They it's confirmed... Like straight up confirmed. Yeah. Did season four, right? Yeah, I think so. It's just like, you know, because yeah. like, they, they said they, 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 they said like specifically that like, no idea about season five, obviously, because that's not how they work, which means if they know they're going to be adding something, it's in the next update, pretty much. So. New beer. Yeah. We don't know how many. We don't know what type. Um, personally, I want like one or f- like both, um, or one of all three, even. But yeah, it's just a cool thing to um, hear. And you know, it's just like new beer. It's been a while, but it's you know, I don't know how much of a focus it's going to be. But you know, it, it, clearly, it's not important enough for them to hide it. Oh yeah, like, well, I, they're yeah, more yeah, I than that. happy to be like, yeah, new beer. Um, yeah. <laughs> because they knew that that so would honestly more, be more um, valuable than hiding that does, that, it, right? That's been more traditional as well, you know, like, I, I get, we always do get something that's not, like, something miscellaneous, that's not the main focus of an update, Yeah. right? We always get new cave shapes, we get something like Phase Unite, um, and, you know, and I think they're all, and this, could be, this could be that, this could be that. that as well, this could be that addition, and, you know, it, it's sort of yeah. you need to keep in mind, this, in a lot of ways, the seasonal model has like retained um it's it's introduced new elements but it hasn't completely abandoned sort of the uh classic the aspects of classical updates it's just made them more um it's just made updates more um predictable but there's still some of the old uh like way they used to do things and things like just adding in a new beer because they've had a good idea is one of those things and it's just always good to be reminded that they still work in that way at least partially um yeah. So yeah, it's always good to hear. Um, I just hope I just hope it's a daily special, or at least one of them is. You know, uh, or it's you know, obviously that would just special, be a lot but, more you know, influential. Re- or realistically, a replacement for Dark Morkite, but also a new daily special would be something pretty cool to see because daily specials are cool. It's, Although, once like, again, it's like buffs, it's gameplay mechanics. Um, uh, yeah, but I think daily specials need to be treated a little bit more like perks than a uh, random like phase unite thing or random cave generations it needs oh, to be I taken see, a little bit more um, seriously and and legitimately interacted with um because there are a lot of a weirdness the fact that the buff beers have been double as strong right for like most of its existence um like double as strong as it's supposed to be and they just kind of let that occur is really weird um and obviously, I think it's it's just weird. Buff, uh, like daily specials are in a very very weird place in the game. Uh, they play a very important role, yet no one really ever talks about them. Um, and they very bugged, but they don't seem to care. Well, um, I know I, I agree so... with that thing, but I think the only thing that um, throws daily specials off as a mechanic is is dark morkite, um, because it's just it's just way more useless than the others and. I think, you know, it would be something that would be, uh, it would sort of change. I guess yeah, it would be... But no, sure, but it literally speeds up your primary objective. Nothing else. the one that does that, but it also it comes across as the most useless one. <laughs> yeah. So, if exactly. you add, if you add one in for every... If you, if you so add one wild. in for every mission type, or you remove Dark Morkite. Um, either way, I'd love to see that on its own, but I, mm-hmm. I agree, actually, that you could take a more... Um, the perk approach, where, you know, we know they want to do more with perks, and maybe that's the same with beers. Uh, same same with the daily specials, I should say. Craft beers mm-hmm. is something else. It, um, corporate issue beers is something They should else. always um, just add whenever they... Anything they come up with should just immediately yeah. add to craft beers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll just have to wait and see. But that's always... Yeah, just just good stuff. 
Um... <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> are there any plans to add uh, stuff? I, I, to I, I, I'm going to spoil this. We are, we are actually working on a beer for season four. Okay. I got you. <laughs> You're cracking my... Uh, um, are there any plans to add content to the Steam Point store to buy for Steam Points? Oh, that's a good question. We, we looked at that back when it arrived, and, and we've been trying to figure out if it's actually, like, what's the value in it. I, I don't mean, like, for, for real money, but... but What's the actual value on this, and how many are engaging with it? And uh, uh, then we ended up not really taking the decision. But I think I think the challenge so, here is that we are not engaging with it. No. So I think that is uh, so. Uh, yeah, we need to understand it more. I think that is. Yeah. But uh, that's it's not out of the question. But uh, we we just have not um, uh, returned to it. No. Uh, Steam is trying a lot of different things, right? There's a lot of different features on Steam, and and uh, it's up to each developer to figure out where to uh, put their effort. Um, we want to talk about Steam points. <laughs> I, don't. I think it's right. the answer basically is is that not there's not enough people that would give a shit about it to be to, for them to give a shit Might about it. Everyone that's on yeah. like you know Windows and PlayStation, you know. Not to mention, yeah, that would be a, a fuck you to all of those people. And they don't do um, that stuff anymore. Like, the only remnant of that is the miners' union, and like that. Well, and it is literally a remnant. Um, yeah, it's not a feature it, they actually think about at all anymore. Um, I think it should be uh, reintroduced. Um, but yeah, this is it's, this is sort of like a scenario which is like why 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 would they, you know? It's like um, yeah. why would they add anything that's not for everyone? Not what they do. But yeah, I'm not particularly interested in that. Yeah. Yes. What about official VR support? Yes, so, so there's the mod, VR. as you know, we would call it official, because we tried the mod, and, and, and it's pretty amazing. I, uh, I, I was, uh, uh, I, was uh, I mean, obviously, it's just a, a mod, I mean, but I mean, it was fully functional, and I think it was kind of an amazing experience. And I, I think uh, Deep Rock Galactic as a, I'm not sure it would, I mean, maybe it would work as a co-op experience, but definitely just playing it uh, single player, going in a mission in VR was really cool. And the funny thing is that the game, turned into almost like a horror game, I think, yeah. because you were walking way more slowly and because and suddenly like uh, yeah, the, verticality. The, the verticality was something yeah. you really like felt. Uh, uh, but I was, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff in that mod. Uh, like you have your pickaxe you can, and you have like a utility belt where you have your stuff in and yeah. you take your guns out and use them. And I mean, I'll, I'll throw flares and I don't know, super cool. Um, but from then and then to actually have a real version of uh, fully developed version of Deep Rock Galactic yeah. that, that, that actually does that uh, officially with our like name on it. Uh, that, that, that's a pretty that's, big step. Yeah. Uh, also because we are not developers for, for VR, so we would need to um, partner up with uh, with somebody else, yeah. and uh, we would need to have the bandwidth to uh, take care of that the same way that we have done with the board game. And yeah. But I think some to say, when, when we have, now we have done the board game, and I think that has been easy, right? Because it has been a project that we could set in motion. And then Mood Publishing have been able to just take that and run with it. Yeah. And we need someone who can take this and just own it. Yeah. Uh, because we cannot handle it in-house. Um, and the problem here is, I think, that if we do a VR, it will be very closely linked to Deep Rock Galactic. And that would mean that we would actually want to uh, be more involved yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, so uh, in, that, in that regard, I think it is way more so complicated. So the answer is that there's no, uh, to be blunt, there are no current plans on this. But as you can hear, we are not, uh, we're not against the idea in the no. future. We think it, it could be a really special experience if done well. So I don't really have anything to say about VR because I just don't like it. But it sounds like they're only slightly interested. But it needs to sort of be in a similar situation as the, uh, the board game. But can yeah, they, they are aware of the value of the experience, um, but they're also aware of how much uh effort it would take not just them in that they can't it they literally they cannot they are not equipped to do it they'd have to get someone else to do it but then they wouldn't want to leave them all to them and it would just be a bit too much for them to do and i feel like they didn't say it but it's also especially since there's a mod that does it already um <laughs> like it it, it, they're it's... not going to look into it themselves i don't think i think they'll probably wait yeah. like a vr developer to want to do it Possibly. Yeah, um, it would be more that I imagine if we do ever them, see a VR. The idea of them setting, sorry, the idea of them setting things in motion like the board game makes a lot more sense to me. Like anything that's not like what you know, the game itself is not stuff that they're going to work on. So it has to be something they can sort of um, set in motion and then just hand over the reins to. Um, so it would have to be in that capacity. But also, you know, they're probably. 
probably very low down the priority list because of the mod as well. And I don't blame them um, in, in this case because it's just a different version of the game, you know. It's not going to affect yeah. Deep Rock Galactic to just leave it as a mod. Also, that mod sounds pretty cool, actually. You know, I don't like VR, but sounds, like, especially with the utility belt, that's like as acting as yeah. like your equipment selection. That sounds pretty awesome, actually. Um, but yeah, mm. I don't really care about VR. <laughs> yeah. If you do remove the legacy launch option, would you consider putting it in the beta section afterwards? Uh, I think it could. So let me just uh, elaborate a little bit about why we are th considering moving it again. The thing is, it is going to be part of the game size. So when you download the anniversary build, it will be bigger because it has the legacy inside it in the, in the anniversary update. Um, and obviously, we are really happy that Deep Rock Galactic doesn't take that much space on your uh, machines. Um, so in that regard, I yeah, that we could consider doing. But let's see, let's see how popular yeah. it is. Let's see how yeah. much it's played. So maybe we'll see the, an influx of players when it launches, yeah. and we'll have a lot of people playing it, and then it will maybe die out really quickly. And and that's it. I don't know. Somehow, I still think it is it is it is really cool that if you come to a game and you love it, that you can actually go back to the roots and and see where it all started. Uh, so, uh, but it, these things aren't decided yet. Just play now, enjoy it. Uh, for as long as it lasts, and then I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen on it with. That's sort of just explaining why they're on the fence about whether or not the legacy version is going to stick around, which makes sense. But um, I actually kind of want to focus on what they said about like the the, uh, the size thing, and they said that they like that Deepbox doesn't take up much space on your machine, and they almost seem to be quite protective of the fact that it's quite a small game. And honestly, I think I know why. Yeah. It might actually be part of the um. You could you could definitely factor it into the actual like the loyalty part of things. It's like it's almost like something that's hard to get rid of. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you agree. Like there's there's never yeah. almost no reason there to get rid of people. Of, once you there got is it. a lot of merit in having a small game. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I've had many games that while I I wouldn't mind like playing every so often, that it's too big to warrant. Right? Isn't like, it's, it's, it's Terraria still simply... less than a gig? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's like two hundred megabytes, I think. Uh, no, it's it's a lot more than that. But either way, it's like Terraria is never going to leave my console. It just doesn't need to, you know. Yeah. And it's actually the same with Deep Rock. I guess yeah. I need to know how much the Legacy Edition like, adds, but it can't be like that much. But I still think they're protective of this, the game size enough where they would only keep the Legacy version around if there was like um, a lot of demand. And to be honest, they should just bring yeah. it back like every anniversary, maybe. Um, that might be a good way to do it. Oh yeah, I, I think for sure. I think that we can expect to see that. Um, yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, yeah. That's I, I, I think good. that's I quite think likely. That's like probably that's like an objectively good idea. I think even if they don't, um, obviously, if they, as in, if they don't um, keep it around, they should just bring it back every anniversary. Yeah. Like, I think that makes a lot of sense. Or they could literally just like I don't know, just like randomly, like, hey guys, this weekend, and, uh, the uh, thing is coming back. Uh, just, you, know, you know, just like random shit like that. Just like randomly bring it back for like celebrations of any sort. Um, yeah. Stuff along those yeah. lines. Also, but the thing is, I do kind of want them to make it its own thing if they could, because you know, they haven't, they don't have a way for it to be on uh, consoles at the moment. But if they did it, and they made it like a small but still purchasable product, like it's in very uh, small price tag, but still you have to buy it. They could actually get some sales from that across different platforms, and I'd, I'd like to play it as well. If they turn it into its own smaller yeah. game, it wouldn't be a terrible idea. Um, I think it'd actually be a good idea. It just depends on how much um, effort that would take. As in, I don't, I wouldn't want them to uh, lose time on it. Certainly, you know. So bringing it back every mm. anniversary is a good idea. But investing in a way for mm. everyone to be able to play it um, would probably only be a good idea if they could monetize it. So I can see why it's not like an easy decision to make. Although. I don't want them to take the decision all that seriously, though. If they just want to forget about it, that's fine with me. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's still pretty cool. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, is Steam Rock, uh, uh, Deep Rock Galactic for uh, Steam Deck going to be officially verified? Hmm. Oh, that is a tough one, because we have actually been looking into it, and, and uh, it, uh, it turned out to be a huge task uh, in terms of uh, our menus. Basically, basically yeah. it's fun sizes. That is the biggest challenge here. Um, and we have not been setting this up uh, in a smart way for no. Deep Rock Galactic. So it's not easy for us to scale funds. It's not easy to... No, and uh, it, it, the thing is, we, we actually kind of started on this, and then it, it accidentally, or because it was so difficult, it's, it got into the Steam version. And then, of course, you complained, and rightfully, because... Uh, it made the game look ugly. It made the game look different and ugly, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so just keeping these uh, apart uh, is clearly very dif difficult for us because we didn't unfortunately think this in when we uh, built the, the game initially. But I'm gonna say, if you know Deep Rock Galactic, right? It, I mean, you can totally play it, it's fully functional, there's nothing holding you back from playing it. We have Deep Rock Galactic out on uh, uh, consoles, where, so uh, the controller is there and you can go yeah. in and I mean, everything is just working. So, I mean, from a gameplay perspective, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to enjoy uh, Deep Rock Galactic uh, on the Steam Deck. Yeah, like um, it's not optimized, but like they just explained, it, it, it you can still play it on the Steam Deck. So I think yeah, from that perspective, makes sense. it's not worth but putting anything. Do you remember? To... What? Do you remember when they randomly started fucking around with the uh, the text font? Like, yeah. The, yeah, that must have been then, right? When they they just randomly changed like the the font size and type and like all stuff like that. Isn't it when um, they made everything it must have been capital them letters? Just... And it wasn't before. Yeah, I assume so. Yeah, uh, it was them trying to optimize it for Steam Deck, but it, it clearly didn't work. But they couldn't really go back that far. Um, but yeah, they did backtrack a little bit. I remember it was quite bad at some point. Um, it was just a bit much. Um, but it, yeah, that's it's funny though. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Steam Deck. Who gives a fuck? Um. All the winners uh, of I'm the, uh, being uh, very recently yeah, asked if there's, there'll be a perk rework in the game. Oh, okay, okay, so that is uh, also something that we are discussing. Uh, we have the same desire. Uh, uh, it's not going to happen for Season 4, I'm just going to say that. No. Uh, but it is definitely something we want to do. We also have some ideas for new perks. But I think when we do it, when we start touching perks, we want to be able to do more than just like uh, adding to the system that we already have. Um, and that turns it into a bigger task. Uh, and that's why I'm so clearly can say no now. Um, it is kind of funny because when we started, when we introduced the poll perk system, we uh, we were worried that people would not be able to get to complete all the milestones and, and get all the perks. So we put in a surplus of uh, of points there. But oh boy, I mean, <laughs> as we have been going, right? I mean, obviously we have been adding more milestones as, as new biomes were introduced or new missions or, or whatnot, right? Which has just been like piling onto the pile of, uh, of perk points that you can uh, gather. Uh, so obviously, uh, if, if you have played the game, basically I think when we got the game out on PlayStation, I started playing it. And I think it took me around 80 hours to collect perk points enough to buy everything. Mm. Um, 80 or 100 hours or something like that, right? And after that, you just continue to pile up perk points. Um, and I think actually the temple that you are receiving perk points and the, the, the I mean that is fine, uh, but I I wish there was like higher tiers or mm. something like that where you could actually like spend your points. Yeah, that's probably my favorite question and answer on the whole thing yeah, because yeah. it's like well, um, while we were watching it live, we, you were like <laughs> screaming because there were so many people to, asking about it, perks. It's something we wanted to know about. Um, and I feel like, you know, we, I think we kind of wanted, or at least we expected it to be like the next thing. Um, but the way they answered it is, yeah. this is what we needed to hear. Rather Honestly, than yeah, wanted. this is much better. Yeah. Um, and it starts with um, that they share the desire for a rework. That's, um, I yeah. picked up on that wording, which is actually very good. They, you know, they even said, uh, you know, it was sort of almost like more half-heartedly on the uh, actual new perks. It's like, oh, we have some ideas, but we don't want to just do that. We don't want to just add new perks. Yeah. Um, they are intent on this, and I think, I, I suppose it's difficult to place when they should do that. But you know, if it's not season four, obviously it's not going to be season four. I just see no reason why they can't just, you know, they do whatever they're doing for season four. But then, if you want to do perks, then make that new focus. Perks. Do it, yeah. just do it, and that's good. That's a good thing, and it's good that they want to do more of it than just adding new ones. Because I think that system needs yeah, some no. more attention. You know, it's the only system that ever needed a rework, and in my opinion, that's the reason why it probably needs one again. Because um, it's one of the less um, rock solid systems in the game. I mean, that's arguably yeah. that is arguably a criticism. I mean, it, no, it definitely definitely is not a huge one, but um, there's more they could do with perks than just adding new ones. And I think they'll do that as well. He even mentioned sort of like higher like tier perks. I think he means that in a more like distinct way, possibly, yeah. not just like another, like just add on more because they they want to do more. Well, of it. I think it's, it's just also... the idea of knowing that they want to do more with perks and just adding new ones is just really good to. It's also interesting. 
Yeah, like, obviously, yeah. I mean, that was like when we were hearing that, we were like, oh, fuck yeah. Because I think at this point, we had already got on the roadmap, so all there wasn't perks, and we were kind of like, zam, we were kind of expecting perks. But then this completely, like, like was like, yeah, no, this is, that's not happening now, and here's why. And it's the entire reason that we understand, right? Uh, because, oh, I gotta ask, do yeah, you think if we were going to get perk rework be, would be quite marketable, do you think? Uh, no. No, okay. That's the that's the that's the exact type of thing that isn't marketable in any way. Like, can you actually imagine a news thing? You're like, the Pro Galactic is getting its perks reworked, and that actually being something you would want to click on if you it was a or let's say it's a random game well, you don't it, really it, give a shit it, about. I think never it would heard, if they added like right? skill trees, maybe. But you know, all right, right, yeah. But say it's say Harry Dialect Two. Um, Dialect Two is getting its perk reworked. That was in the roadmap. Do you care about that, Harry? The game that you never play. Does that make you want to play it? Um, no, uh, no, 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 no. One, pfft. yeah, but I already know that I don't it, like Dying Light. But um, it's no, no. I just mean if they could. No, no. I, I, I agree. I agree. Unless it was like extreme on like the level of like adding skill trees, which I don't think they would do. But you know that would be yeah, very. But you know, even Deep then, is adding skill trees. You know that could be something. But yeah, I agree. Um, but it's still good to hear that they um they want to do it despite that. I think. Yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. Good sign. Uh, it's because yeah, they, they they care about the game, and because they care about the game, they knew that it wouldn't it wasn't as simple as adding perks, which obviously we knew as well. Um, and I feel like this is something because we obviously talk about how the surplus isn't that much to just add new perks, but like with the way that uh, Mikhail talked about it, um, his thing isn't that there's too much of a surplus, um, but the, you just get it all far too quick, um, or like they, they were worried about how long it took for you to get the perks right like they were worried about like it it would take you like the entire game if they only added as many stars as you needed but no you can complete like all of the achievements and get everything within a pretty short amount of time um and that's his thing i think they're obviously the surplus gets more and more but i think even like i don't think he was just referring to the surplus with all the new stuff but it's also that there's just even more sources overlapping for stars so while they're adding more which means you're going to get more surplus there is also you're going to be getting it quicker because there's it's like stacking onto each other and stuff um because like you know with like warnings and that it's it's you'll be you'll be progressing like four uh, things at the same time um and like getting perk points with all those things and it's like yeah it's it's very interesting because he is not simply saying that like there is su- there is a surplus we need to sort that out, or he's not saying that there there isn't as much as a surplus as everyone thinks. Um, we're trying to sort that out. It is literally he's just he knows there is something that needs to be done there, um, and they're probably going to look into it a lot more uh, when yeah. there once that's on their their site, which personally could be um, season five. Yeah, personally, it paints a really like nice picture of the um the future because um. They're in a position now where it feels like they have more. They actually have more direction than they did for season three. Um, yeah. They had it for season one and two because they already knew going into both of those updates that you know uh, the new Gen three, uh, the new weapons was going to be what they were doing. Um, and for season three, they were kind of in the dark. They've, I think, they've taken a lot of feedback on board and they've talked, taken on board things that they want to do as well, which includes like the perks yeah. and stuff. It's like they've got a good. Um, I think they've got a good and trajectory the new now. enemies, like, as new well. enemies like, as part of the main roster. It's like a big thing that sort of needs to happen. Um, a perk rework is something that needs to happen. Um, it lines up to create a pretty nice trajectory, I think, where they at least have some direction, and I think they only need yeah. some direction for them to do well. Um, it's just season three; yeah. they didn't really have any. So that's why I think we're going to be, you know, the next few seasons are going to blow season three out of the water, personally. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, not season one, but, you know, definitely definitely be better than season three. So, yeah, pretty happy about the perks thing. Um, very yeah, happy, that actually. was super hyped hearing them answer <laughs> you know, that. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be greedy, you know. It's like, it, it, the fact that it's not a task, the fact that it's a task that can't just be, um, the fact that it's a task, you know, it's not like, like it's like we can just do this for the next season. It's like, nah. It does also kind of imply that, this. like, like this you know? season, like they're not, they're aware that they can't take as much time as that would need this season, right? That they yeah. are like, as much as we want to do perks. That is too much of a thing. We've taken too long. We can't get that out for season four. So we're doing going to do it at a different time, right? That kind of 
uh, like perspective shows that they are aware that there isn't much time left for season four at this point, right? That there, there, there was never really going to be a chance in hell they could sort out perks in the amount of time they gave themselves. Um, so that that is also another level to it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fucking sick. It is exactly what we hoped their answer would be to that question. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, well, no, it's not. It's that the things. It's better than that. As in, it's like um, it sort of told me what I needed to hear rather than what I wanted. What I wanted to hear was yeah. new perks for season four. Um, but that's not the actual. Right. That that's is not, true. That's yeah. not best case scenario. This is best case scenario. So, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, knowing Which that they, actually, no, they aren't just really, going to add. Um, it's really nice to be able to say that as well, you know? It's nice to be able to yeah. say that the perk situation is actually in the best case scenario. It's something I didn't think I'd be able to say, you know? Um, only yeah. because... And it, it, it's something... It's a weird way to view the game, but it, it happens because of the um, the space between updates, where it felt like there'd been a lot of disappointment only because Season 3 had been the only thing to chew on for so long, and Season 3 was... Um, disappointing for us in comparison to previous season, pre- previous updates um which is just thought sort of gave that era an air of disappointment so so yeah. i guess it shouldn't be difficult to say that this is best case scenario but it is nice to be able to say that definitely um and i'm just yeah. pretty yeah it makes me happy it makes me a happy man to be it puts a smile on my face <laughs> but this is what happens when you're running a game live yeah. and it and you're just building on a system and it and just we're keeps not talking growing. about error cubes Oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not normal. <laughs> Why'd you Update bring Eric Cubes? on future merchandise for Deep Rock Galactic and what about Mox? Yeah, so uh, we, we actually uh, kind of owe you uh, an information on this because um, uh, unfortunately the whole setup we had with For Fans by Fans in the, in the US uh, it has almost ended. You can say that I think still the Golden Dude Bug is uh, available, but, but it has uh, dwindled down to almost nothing. Uh, and on top of that, we also know that uh, on you that uh, it wasn't a, a, a totally fulfilling uh, setup we had because People from outside of US uh, had a hard time ordering it without getting a really high cost on uh, on, trans- uh, on, on, on transport. On transport, yeah. Um, so uh, we are now looking into new solutions uh, on this. Um, it's it's not easy, uh, and um, uh, we we will uh, find solutions. But uh, I cannot say anything about uh, how fast or when. Um, that's 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 the short of it. We we really want some more. Uh, Deep Rock Galactic merchandise, the game, and you, and we <laughs> deserve it. We want it as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think that is the uh, speaker part yeah. of this. Yeah. So, so we, we, th- th- there will be more in the future. But uh, unfortunately, right now, we're on a, a dwarf. Yeah. So that's just about merchandise. And apparently, their sort of their situation with uh, four fans, by fans seems to have just fallen through. <laughs> or at least they've run out or something. I don't know. I saw um, that. Oh, I didn't see that. But like, I was looking at that sort of kind of stuff, and I looked up like, yo, four fans, by fans, and there wasn't like anything, and I could not find any merch other than the golden loot bug that was on like a separate thing. Um, like there was like, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was just nothing. There's just no way we were getting any merch. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I don't have any merch. I don't think you us do actually. <laughs> Oh, no, considering no, asking for like one of the mugs, like one of the beer steins for like Christmas, something at one point. It's, um, it's just because normally uh, I don't really see the point in merch unless it's for supporting them, but we buy DLC to support them, so I don't see what the merch is for. I mean, really. this um, yeah. recent one, like, really is like in game merch, you know, rocking the, the ghost ship logo. Yeah. And like the helmet was that back in Supporter 1, you know, almost. So yeah, that's yeah. a good way of doing it. I mean, I'd like a, a, a big like beer stein, to be honest. I like that because hmm. I mean, actually, you know, well. So maybe, maybe we should. Uh, there's one more question. Then we take the last question. Yeah. Deep Rock Galactic has a strong community of dedicated players who often collaborate on mods and other community driven projects. How does the team interact with the community and what role do player suggestions and feedback play in the development process? <laughs> yeah, so we, we are asked this uh, quite a lot actually by other developers also now in our new role as, as, as publishers. And um, one of the, I think, uh, things that we did really early on was that we allowed uh, and encouraged everyone on the team to actually uh, engage with the community and without having like a, a big list of things that you can't say or without having to constantly check if they could phrase it this or that way. So we just put a lot of trust in uh, in our development team and, uh, and, and that helps. But still now the game is really big uh, the community is like we, we have one of the 10 
uh, most active Discord servers in the world. So now we're also relying on you and uh, the, the community because what, what happens now is that we have uh, all of you that are close closer to the, the development team actually acting as our like uh, extra hands and, and the next circle of contacts out into the community. So I see this kind of as like as a circle of circles that just spread out. Yeah. And and it just not come from one person. You know, Jacob is of course uh, our very uh, fantastic representative in, in many ways. Uh, we, we still have a, a lot of us in here that are uh, on a daily basis are talking to uh, uh, a select group of you and then, and then it spreads on. But it's also like, I mean, sometimes, I don't know, a programmer or, or someone just are reading a Reddit thread or something like that and say, hey, oh, this this idea could be cooler. And then they share it uh, on our Slack channel and then we talk about, hey, should we do this or not? Uh, yeah. So it is also very just happening, right? Or, or very organically, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, and I think, again, the whole fact that we are not planning that far ahead makes it way easier for us to also engage with, with, with you guys. Yeah, and actually embrace these. Because as changes, you can say yeah. with the roadmap right now, there's stuff that we are not ready to talk with you about yet. But it's also because there's a lot of stuff we don't know ourselves yet. So that makes it really challenging for us to develop these things while we don't have any idea about, or I'm not going to say any idea about what no, we're doing, no. because obviously we do have an idea about what we're doing, but we are not 100% set on what we're doing. Um, yeah. All right, so uh, this was... Yeah, so that was that question pretty meaty one uh i wouldn't say in terms of news but um yeah to it. yeah i guess like it, there was some implication there there are probably things that get into updates that aren't necessarily like community-wide requests like they just pick they can just pick up on things and they think are really good ideas even though it might just be one person who suggested them and i suppose that just speaks yeah. to the power of community that you know big stuff usually gets in but also sometimes the occasional little thing does as well and that's just you know that's pretty cool, um, and you know um, the the big like the big stuff where it's like um, they're still very reactionary, and this idea that um, them not planning far ahead is actually useful. I I I have to agree with that in terms of like the way that they work from the game, uh, it makes a lot yeah. of sense. You know, um, I sometimes I wish the planning could start before the wait starts sometimes. <laughs> Uh, for like the next <laughs> season but it, it still makes perfect sense you know and you think about it when it comes to like planning them introducing the seasonal model was almost their way of planning in part every update going forward as in they know that there's going to yeah. be a performance pass um and like events and there's no, they, 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 these well, things that they know they're going to do and the rest of it can be based they? on the rest of it can be based on the ideas that they come up with and the things that they see the community wants so it makes perfect sense to me actually when you actually think about it <laughs> Yeah, like that's why you know before we had seasons, they were like, like we are taking time to like actually think. <laughs> like that was like such a big deal that they were like, yeah, we're gonna actually like sit down and and sort out this game and not what we're gonna do for like the future of it. Um, and that was like an actual time where they did think ahead in that kind of regard. Um, and obviously, yeah, that that resulted in the uh, seasons. And so, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, and it, it sounds bad that you know they don't really think about seasons. But of all time, but obviously, yeah, it it pays off in a lot of regards. My only issue with it is that, like, as far as the the light narrative of the seasons, they would vastly benefit from a sliver of of um like foresight as to whether or not they will be able to continue the story next season or would want to, um, it's and so they can it's, start it's building it's towards there that as well. You know. Yeah, like, like and it's not even like a, a legitimate, genuine issue, but it's just that's just my thing. That is why I think, and, and I still think the not preparing for next season is obviously vastly superior as far as like gameplay additions, like helping them out, like sorting stuff out, like many, 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 many reasons it pros. But personally, and I don't think this equals it out, but there is a con that you know the the the, the story or lack thereof, even the minimal amounts, is heavily punished because it is entirely meaningless. Um, because it it, it is it has it is not building up to anything because they haven't thought about it, and it could easily be dropped next season, so it's not worth getting invested in. Um, stuff like that. Um, it's slightly demoralizing. It's especially since mm. that doesn't take a lot of thinking ahead. It literally just has to be like. We could think for like the next three seasons, should we be doing like this story arc? But they probably won't want to do that. But even then, yeah, it's just that's just my thing with it. Like, even though, yeah, it's entirely fair enough, it does result in like the rivals and the rock pox feeling empty in that they could get dropped any season. And I suppose any honestly, arc they're is, building um, to is coincidence. This is um, the biggest problem season two, though. The fact that it carried over at all was a pretty big yeah. problem. 
right? Because otherwise, it would have been just the law side of things would have probably been just as light as usual. It's just like there was just this element of introducing new things, you know, but that didn't necessarily play into a larger narrative. The only way it did was that season two actually tried to continue something, but it didn't actually expand it or, you know, conclude it in any meaningful way. Um, yeah. And there wouldn't have been that desire for that if it was just, if the theme of the robots had been, the rivals had been contained to one um, update, but unfortunately it wasn't. And, you know, they, they seem to already know that their way of developing the game doesn't work for a strong, like, um, sorry, a straightforward narrative. Um, so that sort of, like, paints the season two in an even worse light where it was trying to, it was almost forced to do something that the game it was doesn't allow for. The beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's more problems with season two than I perhaps thought. You know, they should try and keep the like the, the narrative probably just as light as it's always been, realistically. And it probably would have felt more like that. Just like randomly, just there and then, just like yeah. And that's why I think like part twos aren't bad, but part two should never be connected to part one. So it can feel more like natural whenever it pops up. Um, yeah. I, I think that would be a more reasonable way of doing the improvising then and there because then it would be less like here is this arc we have predetermined for the next three which they would have to do in order but more you know what fuck it robots are coming back and they're going to be funky right and now did they just do that that season and they'll be like uh, the robots or the robots are like leaving even more so or like so shit like that or like the rock pox you know that's going on and like this is like later on once we kind of forgotten about them really they could just bring them back with an improv thing it's like fuck it it's doing this now uh, and then it'll go again um that kind of way of telling a story would be interesting because it's not really telling a story it's just implying one um but yeah I, that was uh, us I, obviously we're not over but like I mean, that was what oh, like um, 20 minutes no, for them um we are done I haven't yeah. seen the reasons yeah. for the other guys. I might, I might, I might do it, but um, it's yeah. There's no point. This is this is a, you know, our length of video already. Yeah. You know? So yeah. and that was the most important stuff anyway. Uh, so yeah, I don't see any reason to do more of this today. Um, yeah. Why? Why would be stupid? Um, well, that was cool. Uh, pretty good. Uh, straight from the mouths of the of the men at the top. Which is why the next bit would have actually yeah. sort of paled a little bit. Um, I might do it as a bonus um, tip video, possibly. Um, so yeah, that was the uh, Dev Q and A fifth anniversary edition. I I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you want to see more of this, uh, you have to wait till next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really aren't in control here. Please click the bell so you can be reminded a year from now when we do this again. <laughs> yeah, um, set a notification on your phone on your calendar. Um, that's probably the better shout. Yeah, but I just wanna, I just wanna, just in general, just um, just put out a general thank you because we've actually been doing pretty well recently, and it's just really fucking cool, man. It um, is just sick. And also, you know, feeling good about Deep Rock at the moment also really helps with that, you know. Um, yeah. So good vibes all around, and it's thanks to you and Ghost Ship together. Good times. <laughs> And I mean, speaking of an evergreen, you know what I mean? As as long as the views keep coming in, and as long as the, the, the game <laughs> keeps having updates, uh, I think this no, is an the, evergreen for the, us the as well. The evergreen uh -huh. is as long as a game keeps going, we'll keep going. Um, that is true, yeah. And they're, they're evergreen as long as the players Although, if we ever get like working. a post, like a, a video that gets like zero views, and it's like it's like a podcast, that would hurt a lot. Um, that would hurt. You can't deny that. <laughs> but uh, that's us, unlikely but I think, to happen every time. I, I think we're past... Um, I think we... I don't know. I don't know what threshold we've broken. Um, hopefully the 100 views have, threshold. We I have a, a small but passionate community of young men. Um, and that is not a blanket yeah, statement. Of, I think some of them actually hate... Fact. I think uh, some of them dislike the game more than we do, actually. It's a bit weird. Because of us as well well yeah the issue is 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 we 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 and it, it depends I, I on what you've got into us from if you got into us from one of our podcasts around season three you probably don't like the game that much at the moment like if you if you've clung on to the stuff that we were saying um yeah, I recommend uh, yeah, that you don't you know it's like, it sounds issue. pretty weird to, like i'm not saying be a sheep but i am saying that if you're if you got your views from us before 
then you should probably also you should probably be receptive to our the way our views have changed as well um not to be a sheep but i'm just saying i wouldn't recommend um clinging on to things that we were saying um like a, a, two months ago or so not inherently that we were wrong um but it's just that there's there's more to there's more to it now um I imagine a good amount of our facts have uh, about things we said have been devalued over thanks to this stream. I imagine, right? Um, like, because I imagine even though we really hoped they would go for more of a perk rework, we never really expected it from them. Um, no, but they are. They they know they know what they're fucking doing. They ghost ship. They'll they'll kick your teeth in and say that we love you and then put them back. Like yeah. they'll yeah, ghost ship is sick as hell. Uh, and we all learnt this this week. Um, so yeah, we've been sick as hell. Um, I'm, I'm busting for a piss. Got a headache. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all. Yeah. Love Mickle. What book cuts are you? Uh, tomorrow. Coming out tomorrow. Whatever that is. Don't. Uh, you, I'm not going to elaborate on what that is. There's a wombo cut coming. <sighs> Bye. Yeah.